Welcome to our first bonus section of the course. In this module, we will be covering how to crack a wireless password. Now, this process can be complex because it requires a lot of tools to complete, but besides tools, it also requires something that all of you might not have, and that is a wireless card that supports monitor mode. Now, this is pretty much the reason why this is a bonus section. You need this in order to complete this attack and not many wireless cards support monitor mode. And what monitor mode allows us to do is to sniff data from access points around us, which then we will use to sniff the hashed password once someone tries to connect to a Wi-Fi. Most of the wireless cards are being ran in managed mode and managed mode is something you would normally use when you want to use Wi-Fi and serve the internet. However, some wireless cards have this monitor mode option. And I will show you in the next video how you can check whether your wireless card can be put into monitor mode and how to do that. Anyway, let's explain how the attack will work in greater details. So let's say we have a wireless access point. And this wireless access point has two devices connected to it. We also have our Cal Linux machine. However, Cal Linux machine isn't connected to the wireless access point. It only has to be close to it to perform this attack. Once we get close to our wireless AP, we turn our wireless card into monitor mode. Once we have it in monitor mode, we will be able to see all of the Wi Fi's around us as well as our target Wi Fi. Once we choose out of all of those access points, which one we want to attack, we need to identify two things about that access point. Those two things are the channel on which it runs and its MAC address. Both of these we will be able to see with our tools that we will use. The channel is just a digit and we already know what MAC address is. Right now that we got our information that we need, the next step is to capture the password. But how can we do that? For this, a device must try to connect to that wireless access point, right? Correct. And once it tries to connect, it will initiate four different steps, also known as a four-way handshake, between the device and the access point. In those four steps, it sends the hashed password value to the access point, and that is what we want to sniff. However, it could be a long, long time until someone tries to connect to that Wi-Fi. So, are we going to just sit there and wait for someone to connect? Well, of course not. We're going to perform a different type of the attack to kick everyone off of the Wi-Fi. And that is called the authentication attack. Once we send the authentication packets, this will disconnect every device that was previously connected to that access point. The goal of this happens once we stop the authenticating. Then, those devices that got kicked off Wi-Fi a few seconds ago will try to reconnect back to that access point. And all that time, we will be sniffing for that four-way handshake with our password key. And as soon as they connect, we will get that password value that we want. After this point, we no longer need to be close to that Wi-Fi access point. We can go on the other side of the world in order to crack that password. Now, you might be asking, how? Well, we wrote the hashed password inside of a file. Therefore, it is on our PC, right? After this, all we need is a little bit of luck that the password is easy and not complex, and then we use that hashed password that we sniffed, and we throw it into different tools that can help us crack this password. Most known tools used for this are Aircrack and Hashcat. Aircrack uses CPU power or processor power to crack the password, while Hashcat can use both CPU or processor power and your graphics card power, and it can sometimes crack a lot faster than Aircrack. Now, the average speed of cracking passwords with these programs, depending on what CPU and GPU you have, would be around 300 to 100,000. And yes, of course, we're talking about 300 to 100,000 passwords per second. So this is a completely different story 
than, for example, brute forcing web login page or SSH or something similar. This is a lot faster. Now, of course, since we are running a virtual machine, the speed will be significantly lower, but compared to previous brute force attacks that we did, it will still be really fast. If the password is not complex and we manage to crack it, then you guessed it. We can connect to that wireless access point. And if we want, we can attack the devices inside that network with all the previous attacks that we learned. But that is completely up to you what you do after you gain access to the Wi Fi. So now that we know how all of this works, let's see the practical side of it and let's crack a wireless access point. See you in the next video.